Hey, Jonathan. I see you there. How are you? Good. How are you today? Excellent. Excellent. So excited to uh, see your workshop. I think I saw some clips of it on the small woodworking uh, workshop community, and I was impressed. So I got a hold of you to see if we could do a little tour and uh, looking forward to that. So tell me a little bit about your workshop. How big is it? Uh, it's uh, about 12 feet by 19 feet. So that would translate to how many square feet? Uh, 228. So I think I know that 100 square feet, since we have a lot of international uh, viewers as well. So uh, 100 square feet is about nine square meters. So that must be about 20 square meters. Right. Somewhere in there. All right. So when did you start setting up your workshop? How long have you had this house or this workshop? Well, this particular house we've had for three years. So um, uh, it was one of the reasons we bought this house is for the uh, attached single car garage so that I could actually build a, have a standalone wood shop that wouldn't get dust all over the cars. Um, but I've been doing woodworking in my last three houses. I've just never had a, I've always had to share it with, with the cars. Yeah, so this is a non-car sharing workshop. Did you have any parents or grandparents that got you into this hobby? Uh, no. Um, the story around our house was my dad wasn't allowed to use any tools with more moving parts than a hammer. <laughs> okay. That was his wife, your, your uh, mother's rule. <laughs> right. All so, right. Uh, But it's funny because both uh, my... Uh, older brother and I both got into woodworking separately at about the same time in our lives. All right. And you got a dog. You got a shop dog? Got a shop dog. Uh, half wolf, half husky. All right. My uh, schnauzer refuses to be in my workshop. The minute I turn on a tool, he's uh, scratching at the door to get the heck out of there. Does your dog spend any time in the shop? He, he can't fit in the shop while I'm working, but uh, he sits right outside the shop and keeps me company. Okay. You generally uh, able to work with your garage door up or down? Yeah, I'm here in Colorado, and I probably shouldn't say this on video because it'll get out, but uh, we have such good weather in the metro area that even during the winter, I often can uh, work with the door open. Uh-huh, and you don't have neighborhood complaints? The good thing about my shop is the way it's set up as well. My uh, This bay for my garage is pointed in a direction that's not towards any of the other houses. So it really holds in the noise. Oh, cool. All right, well, let's do this. Let's have you switch to your uh, back camera. I'm waiting a little bit for the stream to catch up. And there it is. All right. Excellent. Oh, good, I saw the dog here. Yep. Oh, so cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I love the. He likes chilling right there. I am a dog fan. Give me the 30,000 foot level overview. So I only have the uh, garage door. I don't have a man door on it, which really helps with saving for space. And I've got all the windows in here are very high. So I've got all the wall space I can possibly imagine. All right. So just walking in. I try to use as much space as possible for storage. Um, have my trash and I set up most of my tools so they're multi-purpose. I've got my sander along with my chop saw and below it I store my, um, my planer. That looks like uh, one of those articulating arm uh, chop saws. Yep, uh, this is this is a Bosch, and uh, I tell you, it is a uh, room saver. I get it's a twelve inch, so I get a lot of span on it there, but it takes up hardly any room on my wall. So it really works well for me. I'm about ready to buy one of those. Finally, I've. Uh... I had one sliding one Ryobi, it was a piece of crap, it wouldn't cut straight. Uh, 
I got tired of the bars behind it, so I got rid of that. And then I got a, into a, uh, I think it's a DeWalt fixed uh, one that doesn't slide. And so now I'm finding myself one or two inches short of everything I want to cut. So right. I'm, about, I'm about ready to bite the uh, seven or $800 bullet and get one of those that you have. I tell you, it was money well spent. <laughs> Looks like you've uh, attempted to do some dust collection on it. Yep, and uh, this model itself is not known for dust being very good with dust collection, but um, I read, got online and saw some things, and if you just kind of extend the chute down here, um, that really changes things. Uh, I get a little dust around, but not too bad at all. And I just have some more storage. Um, one thing I do is task lighting. Um, these articulating lights are really helpful. I can get them at, um, throughout the uh, shop so I can get light almost anywhere. All right, that's pretty cool. I haven't really thought about doing that. But... Yeah, especially if I work at night, that's real helpful for me. And like having it here for the saw, I put it to where it goes straight down oh. on the blade so I can see real well what I'm cutting and, and where the lines are. Does that, does that uh, miter saw have a laser? Uh, it does not. I wouldn't mind if it did, but uh, for how much it can cut um, lengthwise and all the things it can do and how much power it has, I was fine to go without the laser. What can you cut, about 13 inches or so? Yeah, just about. Um, here, we can measure it real quick. So from the, it's actually real close to 13 and a half. Wow, I'm getting one. And is that your yeah. own insert plate you've done there? Yep, yep, just out of some uh, scrap wood. Got tired of having small pieces fall down in there and then try to fish them out, huh? Well, I, I found that the edges were a little rougher when I cut than if I had the zero clearance. Right. So, right. And, and the one it came with, unlike my old DeWalt, was pretty wide. So I got rid of that pretty quick. And I got a nice uh, miter station there, and but yet yep. you're able to put uh, like your oscillating sander back behind. Yep. where your boards would go so that doesn't have to move and you got dust collection on there. Yep. Very cool. And then as we continue, I have a, a mobile router station and I've got dust collection set up for that as well as my uh, bandsaw. A shop that size, obviously, everything that's going to need any kind of a clearance has got to be on wheels and be able to roll it out in the open area. Right. Um, in this shop, the only two things I have on wheels are the router station and the bandsaw. In my old shop, when I shared it with my motorcycles and cars, uh, that one, everything was on wheels. And so this, yeah. there is no setup time in this one, which gives me more opportunity to, uh, to make sawdust. And uh, you can even find a way to work on barn doors in a garage this size? I, I am currently working on a barn door <laughs> right, right there. And uh, I only moved it out for this session. All but right. the way I have this set up, I can put that on the bench, still have room barely to walk around it to sand and uh, to stain, but I it has room in here. Yeah, and you've got a lathe in there. I don't. I I haven't figured out unless unless I figure out how to do a mezzanine level. I I, <laughs> I, I can't figure out how to put a lathe in my shop. But uh. that was one of the requirements for me um, when I was in junior high school and got into woodworking in school. Um, the lathe really fascinated me, and so. Once I got the standalone workshop here, um, it was one of the main goals was to be able to find a spot for a lathe. And uh -huh. I, I started with this 12-inch uh, jet, 
And um, about a month ago, my brother, he retired to be a full-time woodworker. And uh, he does not do any turning. So he uh, got a project that needed some turning, but my lathe wasn't big enough. So I actually got him to finance my extension. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, the amount of money we save on furniture and stuff is what pays for our toys. So, Right. Uh, how many of those articulating lights do you have around the shop? Two. Uh, okay. The, the one over here, uh, over the miter saw, and then the one over the lathe. And both of those um, come out far enough to where they can give me extra light on the wood on the workbench. And are those something available on Amazon? Yeah, I got those through um, GlobalIndustries.com. Yeah, I've heard which, of them. Okay. Yeah, and so that that's what you know. The bad thing about doing these virtual tours is every time I finish one, I end up spending more money. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Drill press, bandsaw. Yeah, I've got uh, a little bit of storage. Um, come over here and I've got a bench top uh, drill press. Um, I had a full size drill press and I found that I just didn't need that size and it took yeah. up a lot of room. So I went back to the, the bench top. Yeah, I've got a bench top, and so far I haven't found anything I need to do for my kind of woodworking that uh, I need one. Tell me about the pictures on your wall. Who are those characters? Well, of course, we've got Norm Abram, who kind of oh yeah, probably got all of us started. Um, and then Ben Napier from uh, Hometown uh, TV show, Home Improvement TV show. Yeah. But the yeah. one... The one that really matters is over here. This is uh, Mr. Larsh. This is my eighth and ninth grade shop teacher who really oh, gave me Oh, cool. How many hobbyist woodworkers have a picture of their shop teacher? That, that just tells you how meaningful woodworking has been right. uh, for you to carve out room on your valuable wall for, for your teacher. So that's so cool. Yeah. Too bad we pay our teachers like slaves, but... Uh, and it's too bad we've taken so many of the shop type um, curricula out yeah, of right. school, which is just, it's a shame. Yeah. So what's your dust collection? So I've got a um, shop fox and um, it's just a single cycle, but it really moves a ton of air. And for a, a shop my size, it was the only um, non-industrial size vacuum that I could actually permanently plumb. So Do you know get, the horsepower? Um, it's a uh, two horse, uh, one point five. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's 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 actually it's a two. It is a two. So okay. it's a uh, it, it's a workhorse and. As you can see, I've got the entire shop plumb, and it really does help with keeping this clean. Yeah. And healthy. I also go with a uh, um, air filter yeah. up top. I got one of those. I haven't taken the effort yet to do the the uh, dust collection plumbing. You know, with the hard with the hard stuff. Uh -huh. uh, so I have uh, a shop fox as well, but a, a, a kind of an underpowered one horsepower one. But it only feet it only lives with my band saw. Excuse me, my uh, table saw. Yeah. And then I throw on a flexible tube when I need to hook it up to my thickness planer or my uh, jointer. So you built that workbench. Yep. Um, the workbench was one of my first. Um, pieces that I built in my last house where I had a third car garage where I could make some room for, for woodworking. Uh -huh. And it started off originally without the drawers. It was an open design. And when I moved to this uh, space, I went ahead and put the drawers in, which helped a lot and uh, added also uh, paperwork. Uh -huh. 
on that side. On this side, uh, a buddy of mine, his grandfather had a whole bunch of antique tools, so I got an antique vise that I added. And then to help with some of my storage, on the back side, I have a pegboard where I hold some of my more used tools so I don't have to go into drawers or anything for them. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it, to be working on a workbench and just be able to reach down and grab what you need instead of playing hide-and-go-seek. I had so many darn drawers throughout my garage underneath different things. I finally built a 16-drawer cabinet and moved everything to one cabinet. So at least when I'm doing my looking, my hide-and-seek, at least I just can stand in one place and do it. So Right. It right. makes it a little easier. And then I do have yeah. a little bit of storage. Uh -huh. underneath there, which is kind of nice from, for our things that I don't need a lot, but I can just reach and grab. What clamp brand do you like? Oh, uh, I, I use the Rockler. Um, I find these, these are really light, so I'm able to use them one-handed pretty well. And then um, various types of quick clamps, everything from, uh, I guess most of them are quick clamps, some of them are DeWalt. Yeah. But, you know, you never have enough clamps, obviously. Yeah. What's the length of those four, uh, I guess, Rockler ones? Um, the small ones are two feet, and then the larger ones are four feet. Yeah. But then I've got extensions over here, right there, that add another four feet on it, which come in handy on projects like this barn door that I'm building. Yeah. One thing I have found that I would do differently is I have a number of maybe five or six uh, Bessie 24 inch clamps. Uh -huh. And I find a lot of times they're not long enough. And again, right. obviously I've had the longer 55 inches as well. But for beginning woodworkers, I would sort of suggest uh, that if you're going to build any chest of drawers and cabinets and stuff uh, that you go with 32 inches instead of 24 inches it's just going to fit so many more things and and not be that much more cumbersome to work with um anyway that's my experience and and i agree and i started with the longer ones and um then i got the shorter ones as i was doing some small stuff with the lathe the smaller ones came in handy, but um, all around, the longer ones are the way to go. Yeah, the thing I found with my 55 inches in my small workshop, that by the time I put something on my workbench and then threw on a 55 inch clamp, it went all the way across my aisle. Right. And now, and right. now I have no place to walk, you know. True. So, so they're fine for when I throw stuff out in the uh, carport and I got a lot of room, but. Uh, uh -huh. Again, I, I, I like the 32 inch size, seems to meet my needs, you know, 80% of the time. And uh, right. the, my mistake was saying, oh, I buy a whole bunch of 55 inchers, I must have eight of them. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I, it I, just doesn't work in a small workshop. So take that into consideration. Right. What would you say your favorite power tool is? Uh, right now I'd have to say the, uh, the lathe, um, so versatile, so many different things I can produce on that. And I can always have projects going on the lathe at the same time I have, uh, actually building projects going. Yeah. But outside of that, um, I would say the, the chops, the chop saw and station probably gets the, the most use. Am I right or wrong that I don't see a table saw? Um, we just have not gotten to it yet. The table oh, okay. saw All right. it is an extension off of the um, off the workbench and it flows out into my uh, driveway. Uh-huh. So as I okay. said here in Colorado, um, our weather is so good most of the time. Here in uh, the Denver area we get 300 sunny days a year. Um, of course, we're 
we're getting one of our one of our 30 or 65 cloudy days today but i'm able to open the garage door up and then extend my work off the uh table right out into the driveway your wife's going to be upset with you and of course i'll edit it out when she sees that you had her on video leaning over with her butt up in the air Right, uh, doing her, yeah. her gardening. <laughs> I was say, does she need help up there? She looks like she's been bent over for a long time. <laughs> uh, she needs the exercise. <laughs> All right, so you uh, you push your boards out into the open area rather than having them start in the open area outside of your garage door and push them in. Right, and I've noticed uh, on your site and several other sites that I've looked at, that most people have it the other direction. And yeah, I, I don't, played with that. I don't and, know that and, there's an advantage or disadvantage because you certainly got plenty of room for your infeed. Right, and I'm able to use my um, my bench as, as a feed table. And so it, it has just worked really well for me. So here's a tip for beginning woodworkers who are thinking about building their shop cabinets and stuff is maybe take a look if you've got your permanent table saw at its height and then build all of your things that you get, might move around or use in combination at exactly the same height or maybe a half an inch shorter. Um, same height would probably be better. Uh, sometimes if you're using warped boards and you're trying to use a, a work table for the outfeed table or something, if it's not right next to your saw, the warped board can go down and catch before it slides up. But anyway, he's got his uh, workbench at the same height as his table saw, so then he can use it for his infeed support. And uh, obviously, I saw he's got an outfeed table that's connected to his saw so that's the same size and he's cut his miter strips in there so he's set up perfectly for long boards and now you got a different dust collection on your table saw no it's the same system um, it goes in and it has a single line that goes straight over to the all right I, I thought I saw a shop back but maybe that's just for floor you, cleanup and stuff I, I do. Um, I use the shop vac mainly for my planer and my joiner because, um, uh -huh. we, you know, you get so much wood out of those that I find that it's easier to use the shop vac so you don't have to empty the, the big one as often. And then I use it also to, to clean up on, around on the benches and on the floor. Yeah, the big one that you have doesn't really have the separating going on with the uh, big chips going down into a big barrel and correct and the small stuff so then yeah that makes sense See, when you've got a thickness planer or a jointer you need an easy way because you again if you're a beginner you'd be amazed how much wood comes off of those I've got a, uh, I think it's a 35 gallon, maybe it's a 55 gallon. I, I can do some thickness planing and that thing will fill up in no time flat. And that's a big one. And so it's cumbersome to, to empty it. So yeah, just um, on this uh, barn door alone, I did uh, two full vacuums. So 24 gallons of shavings, yeah. getting them down just to three quarter inch. Uh, what's your table saw model? That is also a uh, shop fox. Uh huh. An 1837. Um, I I got this. Uh, I looked online to find what a decent hybrid table saw was, and the reviews of this one were really good. Uh, when I first got it, the um, the arm here was bent, um, and so it wouldn't it wouldn't give me good measurements, but got hold of Shop Fox. They sent me a new one, no questions asked. And ever since then, it's uh, it's worked real well for me. It has a lot of power and uh, it sits nice and strong here in the in the shop. Yeah. We won't get into the old uh, saw stop versus uh, other brands. Uh, 
Uh, Civil, Civil War argument that never seems to end. But uh. Well, if I had the money, I'd go with, uh, with the saw stop, but uh, um, I just... I, I just can't afford it at this point in time. Yeah, so you want to do one of two things. You want to have the money to afford it, or you want to have really good insurance. Right, right. <laughs> well, anything else? Uh, how do you handle wood storage? That's a good question. I cheat. Um, so while I'm in process of uh, a project, I use this space right here where I, I kind of put what I'm getting ready to cut or what I've just cut. But what I do is I come over into my actual garage and I have a, a large storage piece right there. So as you can see, I've got, I'm getting ready to do a large project right there. All right. So in other words, you're encroaching upon another area. Right. And pretty soon you'll take that over and then you'll have to park your car in the driveway. But you know, my just... wife's funny that way. She uh, she thinks that her car ought to be in the garage for some reason. <laughs> well, <laughs> happy wife, happy life. So. <laughs> right. All right. Oh, wait a minute. You even got more stuff in there. You got... That's my other hobby right there. Okay. That's what I'm doing when I'm not woodworking. All right. How many of those have you restored? Uh, this is the first. Um, after my uh, motorcycle crash, I got rid of all my motorcycles, which filled up this entire bay. And with that money and the insurance money, I was able to uh, purchase this project. Very cool. Tell me about it. What is it? It's a 59 Chevy Apache, a long bed fleet side. It's, uh, um, right now it's all original and I'm getting ready to, to make it a daily driver. Wow. And it'll haul your uh, sheet goods. It will. And that was one of the big reasons I'm getting a truck. And then I figured if I'm going to spend money on a truck, I might as well have one I can tinker with like I used to on the motorcycles so that's why I went to the retro yeah so it is running or it's close to being running it is running um, cool. but it is running with all uh, original parts so it doesn't run very fast all right well a man of several hobbies I like it yeah it keeps me off the streets at night and, and of course why got to have likes it too oh look at that bed that's cool gotta have a wood bed Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people call those really old antiques, but uh, some of us, not you, but me, that was kind of the 57 Chevys what I drove as a young kid, and it was a brand new car. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I grew up with the uh, early 60s uh, internationals. Okay. Um, driving out on the, on the ranches that I'd work. Well, Jonathan, that is a pleasurable, beautiful, functional, and obviously very clean uh, workshop. I appreciate your uh, moving stuff out so you could show us what it looks like between projects. I I'm very, very impressed. That's a nice looking setup and uh, I'll bet you're going to have a lot of fun time in there. Well, you know, this is my awe place. When I open the door and step in, um, my whole energy changes. The stress from whatever I'm dealing with at work or in uh, personal life just goes away because I have to concentrate in here and I've set it up to where it's uh, pleasing for me to look at. So being in here is just that makes me feel good. Yep. Yep. I like it. All right. I'm going to switch now to my closing stuff. And uh, let's see. So that'll appreciate the tour very much. Uh, Absolutely. We'll see you in that uh, Facebook group, Small Workshop Woodworking Community. For the viewers out there, I just want to ask you to give us, if you like these workshop tours, then give us a like, a comment, and a subscription. And uh, stay safe in your workshops. And thank you for watching.